the nature and the rate and the scale and sophistication of attacks has increased enormously uh, since the advent of the pandemic. Uh, you know, traffic as a whole on the internet, uh, we've, we've seen about a year's worth of growth uh, overnight uh, when shelter in place orders were put into effect. But in terms of the attack traffic, we've seen several years worth of growth uh, virtually overnight. Uh, and I think there's, there's a few reasons. First, the stakes are higher. Uh, you know that everything is online now. And so if you can disrupt an online business, the impact you have is, is greater than ever before. And uh, I, I think that's why you're seeing such a rise in the ransom attacks. And just in the last few weeks, on a global basis, uh, dozens and dozens of major enterprises have been threatened and, and, and brought down with denial of service attacks because they didn't pay ransom. Uh, in fact, we've seen uh, two or three uh, major stock exchanges in Asia Pacific region uh, that were hit with these attacks. Uh, and at Akamai, we've done many now emergency integrations to help mm -hmm. defend them so they can stay online uh, and not be threatened with the extortion. The, the volume of attacks, these denial of service attacks, is bigger than anything we've seen before, uh, you know, well over a trillion bits per second, hundreds of millions of packets per second being you know, launched from bot armies against the target. Uh, we're also seeing a, a huge increase in the number of account takeover attacks. And this is where the criminal entity is trying to steal a bank account or a commerce account or even now media accounts. Uh, they've gotten credentials from, uh, uh, from a hack somewhere and then they try them against thousands and thousands of websites. And when they get a hit, they sell the credential to organized crime to empty mm -hmm. your bank account or, or buy goods with your credit cards. Uh, the attempts at malware targeted at enterprise employees is up by 5X, five times increase uh, since COVID, which is astonishing. And, and I think the reason of course is because so many employees are working remotely and that makes them more vulnerable. They're using a consumer device. Uh, it's easy to get malware on it. And then that consumer device is being used to access enterprise applications and data. Uh, and so the adversaries are targeting those employees uh, to, get, to get malware on their devices. Also, enterprises themselves are more vulnerable because of the distraction with COVID. Everybody's lives are different now. Uh, you've got employees working remotely and it's inherently less secure. And so enterprise IT shops are uh, really challenged. And the attackers, you know, COVID hasn't disrupted them. Hmm. And they're really taking advantage of, of the situation. Uh, so we're seeing, in terms of new attacks, we're seeing a lot of form jacking, mage card attacks, malware embedded into third party applications, into code that's commonly used on GitHub or Google or AWS uh, and causing large data breaches. So just, just across the board, an increase in number of attacks, scale of attacks, sophistication of attacks, uh, you know, pretty, pretty scary what, times. What, what, how do you see trends which may change if and when we successfully uh, cope with uh, COVID-19? That's a great question. And of course, it, it's always hard to know for the future, but I think we should expect to see continuing increase in uh, cyber attacks in their scale and sophistication. Uh, I, I wouldn't expect to see another huge jump like we saw with COVID just, just overnight, a huge increase. Uh, but I, I think it will, will continue to have the, the attacks grow because the prize is so great and because it, it is possible to do. And the adversaries are large entities that are well-funded and have a lot of talent and they have, they have willpower and an objective that, that they want to accomplish. And so they will continue to invest to raise the game. Uh, you have nation states with clear objectives. You have organized crime, you know, which is looking mm. to make money. Some mm. of the nation states are looking to mm. make money. Mm. Uh, you have political hacktivism, 
Uh, you have terrorist groups, you know, engaged in cyber activity. And, uh, you know, so it is not going to go away. Uh, and so I think we should expect to see a continuing increase, but the rate of increase should not match what we've seen this year. This year has really been extraordinary. And how do you evaluate uh, the risk and threats to critical IT infrastructure, which may go beyond the capacity of uh, individual companies, uh, private uh, sector companies to handle? I, I think we're already past that. Uh, just with the, the simplest denial of service attacks, uh, they are big enough today to take out any data center, to take out all but a handful of companies, uh, to take out most countries. Uh, there's large countries that the attacks today, if they were well targeted, could isolate that country from the rest of the internet. Uh, so it's it's already you know a major challenge. And uh, does your company provide any uh, solutions uh, to alleviate the risks to a critical IT infrastructure attack? Yes, we do, uh, and that's really important. Um, and you know, like. And you see that with just, you know, the recent the stock markets in some countries in Asia Pacific. And uh, you didn't read headlines about several of them, which we protected. And and the ones you did see headlines with, we, we now protect. Um, so, yeah, the critical infrastructure is a major target for ransom or extortion, uh, but also political objectives. Um, and ultimately, if it ever got more serious with nation state activities, you know, that are come close to more military objectives, obviously those would be targets. And that becomes much more serious because the, the major nations are capable of doing much more damage. The World Knowledge Forum.